Hello everyone, this is my quick look at the LEGO Star Wars Betrayal at Cloud City set. With over 2,800 pieces, it measures roughly 27 inches or 68 centimeters across at its widest point. It's divided into four pie slices, three of those being divided further into smaller rooms. Let's start on the outside of this pie slice. This first area represents the lounge space where our protagonist guests are accommodated. This includes the crystal sculpture in the center of the room and a vertical opening door. You'll see a number of these throughout the structure and these can be locked open. Next is a small space that I believe was just barely used twice in The Empire Strikes Back. The first was when C-3PO was left behind shortly after they arrived at the place, and he wandered off and got himself shot up by a stormtrooper. The second time was when Luke arrived and was sneaking around the place. He goes off through a small passageway that we don't see. Closer to the center of the model is a section of the large promenade that is very brightly lit, and they've got one of the light sculptures there, also some murals on the wall. Not a lot of detailing here, but there is some mostly, again, up on the walls and even a piece of art installation on the side. And then here's the very nice dining room where Vader springs his trap. This has plenty of space around it, some details for food items on the table. And next to the entrance on the inside is a micro-scale model of the entirety of Cloud City itself. Once again, that's a door that opens vertically. Moving counterclockwise, we now get to a major landing platform. The star feature of this area is Boba Fett's Slave 1, but we'll look at that separately later. With it removed, the platform itself is plain, which is kind of appropriate. Interestingly, this is a separate build that's designed to be removed easily. The door here slides to the side, though in the movie it slides vertically like the rest. From this area, you also get a good view into the next section, which has these very red corridors for the prison cell area. Here's how that looks from its own side with another horizontally sliding door. This in particular is the room that's been set up for interrogation with the makeshift torture device to use on Han. There's also a very small sub-cell space in the back that's just large enough to fit a figure in there, but it's very difficult to access. Across the hall is another sliding door to another memorable space. This is the incineration room with the conveyor belt with pieces of C-3PO coming down on it towards the incinerator itself that has some bright orange inside and you have a deactivated IG unit off to the side. Lining the edge of this space is supposed to be a hangar, though it's not even really large enough to hold on to this small twin pod cloud car that we'll look at closer later, but it does have a secret little passageway here that leads down to nothing but just a ladder that hangs there. There are a couple of tools and a couple of doors to other spaces, including this one fairly enclosed space that is difficult to see in and definitely difficult to get your hands in to place figures there. In the last major section of the build is just the edge of one of the maintenance cabins on the large wind vanes that uh, Luke and Vader fight upon and through. And there's also the walkway out to the sensor platform, which has a lot of nice detailing, some bent uh, railings to have a little bit of safety there that you can circumvent. You can hop over the side and climb around these. There are a lot of bar-shaped pieces to hold a figure on. There's also a piece that you can remove back here to free all of this up to allow it to swing from side to side so you can change its angle and get it farther away from this build. This obviously represents the carbon freezing chamber scene and this has a mechanism built into the base of it. It's actually fairly tall but it works pretty well with this lever that you pull to one side to swap between the Han Solo figure there and Han Solo in carbonite. It's just switching between these two, pulling one up, pushing the other one down. This is also another completely removable section. This version of Boba Fett's Slave 1 was designed as small as reasonably possible while still accommodating a full-sized minifigure in the cockpit in both forms, in its landed form like this, and its flying mode where you just have to take the figure out and rotate it around into a different seated position. This has two stud shooters that you can use on the sides. The little winglets automatically adjust based on the position, and this is pretty decently detailed around the back with a large open space it's big enough to accommodate Han Solo and Carbonite all the way in there. It's only accessible from underneath though, no access from here. The Twin Pod Cloud Car is also a very compact build with two stud shooters underneath and accommodation for two minifigures, one on either side. You just pull this back, bring this down, and you can see the space for them. Very well done. 
Rounding up all the figures in this set, we get both major style variations of Han Solo and Princess Leia, as seen on Bespin, and these all have double-sided heads. The new Lando gets a printed and double-sided cape, then we get the two droids C-3PO and R2-D2, followed by, of course, Chewbacca with his bowcaster. Next up, the Skywalkers, Junior and Senior, a very, very well-detailed Boba Fett, and a fully operational IG-88. Luke also gets an alternate face, and Vader has the two-piece helmet. Here's some of the Cloud City supporting cast, with Lobot on the left, two security guards with different heads, and a single Ugnaught. And finally, we end with two cloud car pilots that are completely identical. They just have double-sided heads, and I've swapped one of them around, followed by two generic stormtroopers. Again, the pilots have double-sided heads, and the stormtroopers are angry clones. And that completes my quick tour of the major features of this huge set. For a longer, much more detailed and in-depth look at this, be sure to check out my full review on the Jangbricks channel. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you again as soon as I can.